So smart, it's like not really fair. This is 1014 best sight seeing pair. Don't you dare. Okay, let's go ahead and get right into it. So you're given an integer array values where values i represents the value of the ith sight seeing spot. Okay, so you have all these spots in the array at a certain index, like an index i. You have the value of the spot at index i. Two sightseeing spots, i and j, have a distance j minus i between them. Okay, so if you have this j spot, and then you have this i spot, right? So the, 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 the spot at the i index and the spot at the j index, you just subtract those from one another to determine the distance between them. Okay, you do the score of a pair, i less than j, okay, so that's an interesting constraint, of sightseeing spots is value i plus value j plus i minus j. Which kind of makes sense for sightseeing, right? Like the value of i, right, that's the value of this sight you're seeing, and this is the value of the other sight you're seeing, but the distance between them is going to contribute to the, the score of that site right those those sites together those sites as a pair and you'll notice since i is less than j right as you increase the distance between them it's going to minimize your score so that's what you can notice from looking at this function right the farther apart these sites are from each other that would mean that j is larger than i and j continues to get larger than i and you're subtracting j from i so this becomes negative so the farther apart things are the lower your score is Okay, the sum of the value of the sightseeing spots minus the distance between them, right? So the value of each of the spots minus the distance that, that occurs between them. And that distance is just based on the index of each of the elements, right? So you could just imagine that there's all these things in a row, right? And each of these things has a value and you try to pick a pair of them, but the distance between them is going to minimize, it's going to lower your score. So you want to th you want to pick things what so you want to return the maximum score of a pair of sightseeing spots so you want to maximize the values that you get but also consider that you want to minimize the distance between them because the farther apart they are from each other the lower your value is right and the closer they are to each other the higher your value is going to be okay so in this example right if we didn't consider distance right we would say well the best two values we can get would be zero and one two three four right for example right if you had uh eight one five two six if you didn't think about this idea of the distance between them you'd say well the best two i could get simply put is just eight and six and that's 14 but the best value is 11. Why? Well, you might get 8 plus 6 if you choose both of these values, but you need to consider the index of the element as well, right? So this is the values of i, and this is i itself. So this is i equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So if you were to choose 8 plus 6, you would get 8 plus 6 minus or plus 0 minus 4, right? Because you have to take the ith element, 8. So you get the value of the, is the 0 element, and 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then you take the jth element, and the value of the jth element is 6 and index 4. So if you just plug that directly into this formula, you get 8 plus 6 minus 4, which is 8 plus 2, which is 10, right? So you'd get 10 if you chose this element and this element, versus if you choose i equals 0 and j equals 2, right? So i equals 0, so you choose this value. j equals 2, so you choose this value. Right, so although they have lower values, since they're closer to each other, you spend less, you lose less because they're closer to each other. So you just subtract two from this and that's eight plus three, which equals 11. So you notice how this works, right? So it's not necessarily the fact where just picking the two greatest values will give you the best score because you have to factor in this distance, okay? Um, in this example, well, you know, it's kind of like a base case, not saying that we're gonna use recursion, but you know, you have one and two, well, the best two you can choose are just these two. And with your constraints, you know, that there's always at least two items. Okay, so the n squared solution, right, the easiest solution, which probably won't pass because this is five times 10 to the four. So if you had an n squared solution, it would be 25 times 10 to the eight, which is 2.5 times 10 times 10 to the eight. So 2.5 times 10 to the nine, far too slow, right? That's too slow. It's not gonna pass. We're gonna get a TLE issue. So 
that's not going to work, right? Because the n squared solution is simple, right? You just look at each pair of elements, right? n choose two elements. You look at each element and its index. You Then you just plug it into this formula and you return the maximum. So that's a very intuitive solution. And if that's all you can get, at least you have something. So like I always, like I always argue, what I always uh, um, suggest is in any interview context, try to just just state the brute force solution. Just state something, just so you know there's in, you have intuition. You might not know you might not know specific tricks that you've learned from just doing hundreds of problems and studying data structures and algorithms, but you know how to code, right? You know how to take a problem and approach it to find a solution, even if you can't find an efficient one. That's kind of a side note, but just state the brute force solution, right? So there's an n squared brute force solution. You literally just look at each item. You could do a for loop, right? You go through i and you go through j, you go through each i, you go through each j, calculate the formula, return the maximum one. But that's not going to meet the constraints of this problem, right? Because uh, there's far too many you know, n is far too large if n is the length of values. Okay. So I guess the first observation you need, right? There's really two observations you need for this problem. The first one you need is that for any j value, right? So for any j value, i has to be less than j. So we want to choose an i that maximizes what maximizes this formula so we, for 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 any j so for any j what do we want we want to maximize something we want to maximize the values that come before j right we want to choose the maximum maximum i such that it maximizes this formula, which is um, stated above, I heard something weird. It was weird. Um, values. I'll do it in a different color, just because we like to get fancy around here. You know, I spend so much on this tablet, I might as well uh, use it. Okay. So whatever. I'll just do blue. So I. We want to do. Oh. Values of I. I just. I just. I just. I swear. We want to do values of i plus values of j plus i minus j, right? And there's only one such value that meets this condition, right? So we kind of want to keep track of what the maximum thing is before any value, right? So we want to keep track of when I'm looking at a certain element, I, I want to keep track of what's the maximum thing that could provide the most for this element, right? Usually, if you were doing this problem without this constraint, right? Let's do this problem where we're just trying to maximize values i and values j. If that was the case, right? You were just trying to maximize value i and value j, and you didn't consider the distance between them, you would always just keep track of the maximum value, right? If we were doing this problem, and let's just say that we remove this constraint. Let's just say for the sake of trying to build our intuition, we remove this constraint here. And we just consider the maximum of values i plus values j. Is there a way to efficiently do that? Well, to do that, what you would do is you'd say, well, I'll just keep track of the maximum ith index, right? If I did this problem that way, right? I'll just keep track of the max ith index. So the ith value that I'll use, I'll just call it ith, right? So what I'm saying is for any j value, there'd be a maximum i value that comes before it that'll provide it with the maximum sum. So if I look at any j value and as I go through the system, I just keep track of the maximum value before me, I'll always have the value that I'll use to get the maximum ij pair using this j. So what I'm basically saying is like, let's call this j now. Okay, and this is the value of i, values of j, value of any index. The, the maximum value up to here, right, that would provide me with the largest i value is 8, right? And the maximum value up to here that would, so for, so here we'll put uh, values of i plus values of j. So we'll put that system here. So here there's nothing, right, because there's only one pair, but we'll just put an 8. It's fine. Or I'll think about what we'll do there. For there now we'll just put a put a little just 
grid line to specify that we don't know exactly what's going to go there. But what I'm going to do is every time I look at a look at a value, I'll keep track of the largest ith value that I can use, right? Because the largest ith value will be what I connect to any j value that I encounter to maximize the score, right? So now when I'm looking at one, I know, okay, I already know what my maximum ith value I should connect myself to. I should use eight and I'll get a sum of nine. And then I'll look at one and say, does one increase my maximum ith value? No, eight is still the best thing I can do, right? Because I can, I can just save what my ith value is and then go through each j value and already know what I should pair this j value with to maximize the score, right? Now, when I look at two and I have five, I say, okay, well, my j value is five and the maximum ith value I can provide is eight. And that would give me eight plus five. What is that? A little bit of 13. And then I look at five and say, does five increase my ith value? No, nope, five does not increase my ith value because my ith va the maximum ith value I can provide is eight, okay? And then same thing here, I have two and I have eight, I get 10. I'd ask, does this increase my ith value? No, this is 10. And then eight and six, does this increase? No. Nope. So my ith value, my ith value is still eight, eight plus six, nine plus six, 15, 14. So then I have the score here of 14, right? So what I'm essentially saying, right, is when I go through this system, if every time I look at a value, I just keep track of the largest ith value, then I'll know that's what I should match with my jth value, right? I'm going through the jth values, and every time I see a larger value, I say, ooh, this would be a good ith value. So I use that as the ith value for any future iteration, right? Because the ith value always has to be less than the jth value. So every time I look at a value, I can make it the ith value for the subsequent run, right? The only issue here is, though, is that, you know, 8 is good here, but as you increase the system there's an ij factor. So just because it's eight doesn't mean it's gonna provide eight, right? Because what happens in the system as you increase, right? Like it provides eight as a value over here, but there's this huge distance between them. So since there's a distance between them, you're no longer gonna get that total eight, right? Because we can't forget about this i minus j part. But what this will basically tell you is like, in order to find the maximum pair in n time without this constraint, right? I would just keep track of the ith value that maximizes my score. And for each jth value, connect that jth value to that ith value using this process here. Okay, so that's the first observa ob observation. The second observation is, well, if we look at this again, maybe I can think of it in terms of the mathematics. Think of it in terms of the mathematics. I plus values of j plus i minus j, right? So that's the formula we're trying to maximize. Now, what I said before for this, right, we, we, we catch the values at i, right? So we don't actually need to keep track of the values of i. We just need to keep track of the max value that comes before j. So we'll just call that the ith element. We'll call that ith max. So every time we run this loop, we'll keep track of the maximum thing. Right, so we can actually just write that code just so it's, it's crystal clear what we're talking about here, right? So we'll call that ith max, and we'll call uh, our max pair, and we'll set it equal to zero, zero. So what we basically do, right, is we look at, we look at each, whoa, what the heck? Somehow my, isn't that weird? What did I, something got, okay. We have the, our ith max and our max pair. So what we'll do is we'll look at each value. We'll look jth value. We'll call this uh, the max ith value. For each jth value in values, well, we'll say, well, the max pair is if we use the max ith value plus the jth value or any previous max pair that we found, and then we'll update the max ith value. We'll say, okay, is this new value that we're getting larger than the previous value that we found? And we're going to do that compared to jth value. And at the end, we just return 
the max pair. Now this isn't right, right? Because this will this is not going to consider that i minus j. This is just me coding up the solution to what I previously said an n time algorithm. Math i value. I just love math so much. I spell it out even when it's not related. Int object is not max pair equals the max. I don't know what I'm doing, guys. Don't do this in an interview. Don't do, continue to do things wrong. Okay, so now it's saying 14. Why? Well, because it's doing this process here, right? Where the maximum was 14 with eight plus six. So what I'm basically saying is we don't need to have what the value i is in i minus in i here, right? Because for each jth value, we'll just have the maximum value that comes before us, right? So if we call that in our code max ith value, so let's use the same terminology so that things are clear. Right, max ith value plus values of j plus the ith index, right? Because that's the index of i. We'll just call it i, whatever. Minus i minus j. Okay, so now we don't need to actually know, we need to know what i is, but we have this variable here. Um, so how can we think about this? Well, let's just reorder this a little bit. I actually don't know where I'm going with this, so hopefully I get something that makes a little bit of sense. Plus values of j. Okay. Um, so I guess the idea here, right, is that the maximum value is actually the maximum value, the ith value, plus the difference between where you're at now and where that ith value is. Right, so we could keep track of ith and update i accordingly, but I guess something to notice here, right, is like every time j increases by one what happens to the max ith value in total right if the difference between these things is one right so if the difference between the ith and the jth element is negative one meaning that they're one apart from each other right so if they're one apart from each other then the total value that i'm going to be able to get from the maximum ith value is max ith value plus minus one plus values of j, right? Because they're one away versus if they're, you know, two away, right? If, if j is two away, then the max ith value minus two plus values of j. Which makes sense, right? Because every time they move, I move one away from the max i value, it's going to decrease by one, right? Because whatever value I'm looking at, if I want to make that the max again, it's going to be one farther away. So what I'm, basic, what I'm trying to basically say here using this, this way of writing it down, if it doesn't make sense, is eight is the max here, right? And it's going to provide... 8 minus 1 to this system here. Right, that's how you get what? So let's let's write down the whole thing again because I don't want to miss any point here because I'm going to end up making things too confusing. Right, so let's still call this J. It's fine. Okay. So our formula is the values of I plus the values of J plus i minus j. So when we're in this system here, right? And let's put that here. This would just put a blank line. When we're in this system here, how much are we actually gonna get provided when we reorder this system, right? Because we're gonna keep track of the ith value plus i minus j, and that's one thing, plus values of j. Well, the ith value will provide us with 8, right? This will become 8. 
but since the ith value's index is zero and then its index is one, effectively, it's only providing me with seven. Does that make sense? So the second observation really is, is like every time I move one away, right? Every time I move, the maximum value is going to get decreased by one in total, right? If I just looked at the ith value as this whole thing, right? It was eight, but now since I've moved one away, it becomes seven, right? Because when it's using this value, that what it's actually going to contribute is seven. You can think of the ith value as being eight, but since it's one away, it only is going to contribute a total of seven to me, right? And same when I get to this, this five here, right? Now the ith value can only contribute six to me, right? Because it can contribute eight, but since it's two away, right? It contributes eight, but since it's two away, it's going to end up subtracting two from the ith value. So it can only actually provide me with six, right? And then here it can only provide me with five and here it can only provide me with four, right? Because every time you move one away, you have to decrease what your maximum value was before by one, because now it can only effectively give you one less than what it could give you before right if i think about it in terms of people right if this is the the largest person or how would i do that maybe that's not a good idea but at least you get two guys here that look pretty happy and sad but the idea is if i'm if i'm farther away even though you're eight every time you have to move one unit to get to me you're gonna have to decrease by one right so i might as well decrease you by one every time I increase the value of J because that is effectively what you're going to be able to contribute. Okay. So that's how you can get this solution here, right? Six plus five, 11, five plus two, seven, four plus six, 10, seven plus one, eight, eight plus nothing here. Cause I have nothing to compare it to. So maybe this shouldn't be, this would be null as well. Okay. So I'm hoping that that makes a little bit of sense. Right, the idea is for the second observation, just to write it out, right, our second observation is, although value of i is maximum at the ith value, in total, value of i contributes value of i plus i minus j total points to value of j right so every time you increase the ith value the ith max value you have to every time you increase the jth index you have to decrease the ith value by one because every time you move over by one you get smaller right the idea is is let's imagine that you had uh i don't know I, it's weird to think of it like that because it doesn't make sense in those terms but it's it's okay right so uh, hopefully that makes sense so i ideally what you would do is you would just say well my new max value right at any index right my max ith value is well Whatever my max value was before, since I'm going to move over one, it's going to decrease by one. So whatever my max i value was before, but now it's going to decrease by one. Or my new i value could be this jth value, but it too is going to decrease by one, right? Because when you increase j, right, when you increase j, they'll be one away from whatever this value was. And when you increase J, it'll be one away from whatever this value was, right? The I value used to be able to provide eight, but since you moved over one, now it can effectively only provide seven. And since you moved over one, it can now effectively only provide six. And at some point, if this was like seven here, right, it would be better to actually use this value going forward, right? You would choose this value over this value to make this six, right? Because this seven would become a six you wouldn't use this six anymore because it would only be able to effectively provide you with five, right? So it's kind of a greedy approach. It's like whoever's close to me, whoever can provide me with the most, I don't care what your value is, but what can you provide me with? So I'll keep track of how far away the maximum thing is 
by every time I go to a subsequent index, I'll decrease it by one. Because every time I go to a subsequent index, I'm one more away from that maximum value. Okay. So instead, the max i value is now what? Well, whatever the max i value was minus one, right? Because now I have to decrease it by one because I'm going to be moving one to the right. So now I'm one farther away from whatever that value was. So whatever can totally contribute to me decreases by one or whatever this j value is minus one because maybe this j value can provide me with something larger, right? Maybe it's even if the max i value used to be 100 and this is only and this is only nine or this used to be 10 and this is only seven, but this is more than four away, it'll get decremented to something smaller than seven. So it'd be better to use this j value. Right, but it's still the same because the max i value now is just the effective value that I'd get from using that value because it, it encapsulates also the distance to the system since we're subtracting one every time we increase. Okay. All right, let's submit that. And I'm just going to call this i. And look at that. Jth pair ith jth, right? Because now that we don't have i and j, we don't need it. We can just call it the ith value, whatever, 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 and whatever. And if we really want to be fancy and we really want to impress ourselves, we can put this all on three lines. Okay. So what is the what is the runtime and space complexity of this problem? Well, let's say n is the length of values. Okay. For time, well, we create these two variables, so it's constant. We just look at each value, right? So we look at all n values, and then we just do two constant operations, right? This is a constant operation, finding the max of two things. This is a constant operation, find the max of two things. We say that the two variables, a constant operation. So for, for n values, we do constant things, right? So we do a constant thing for all n values. Therefore, we do a total of n things, right? Proportional to O of n. Uh, what about space? Well, we just create these two variables and then we update them within the loop. There's no recursion. There's no additional stack space. There's no... You know, it doesn't scale with n. If n, if the length of values was a million or the length of values was seven, we only need to keep track of these two variables, right? Whatever we think our max pair is that we can find and the largest i value, right? Maybe not the largest i value, but the, the, the value that can contribute the most to the jth value because we decrement the i value at every iteration. Okay. All right, guys, that's all I got for today. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, rest of your weekend. i jth. Don't hate, appreciate. My coding skills are good, go rate.